One of the braces on the old backboard was detached when I got the ukulele and the other was missing. I am at the point where I need to get the sound bars, braces, and bridge patch off of the old ukulele so that I can use them for the new soundboard and backboard. There are two screws that help support the bridge, but they did not connect to the bridge patch. The first steps are to remove the screws and saddle from the bridge. This is my Rockler steam bending kit that I will use to loosen the glue on the soundboard so I can easily remove the parts. The kit comes with a free set of plans for building a steam box and includes the necessary hardware, but that is for a future project. For now, I am putting together a makeshift steam box out of aluminum foil roasting pans and spring clamps. I need the steam box to be quick to assemble and large enough to enclose the old soundboard. I will include information in the video description about the Rockler steam bending kit. The outside of the makeshift steam box gets very hot. I will use these flat build pliers to grip and remove the steaming hot pieces of wood. To protect the wood pieces, I have lined the jaws of the pliers with two layers of painter's tape.
I marked each of the pieces when I was making the detailed drawings of the ukulele. I will use these reference marks to assemble the new ukulele with the parts in the correct locations. You can see that the steam started to separate the layers of the soundboard. The bridge was quickly cleaned of the bits of wood and glue and is ready for the new ukulele. As I flipped the soundboard, you can see that the bridge and bridge patch were not properly aligned on the old ukulele. I will make a change from the original layout on the soundboard and move the bridge patch down about a quarter of an inch. This should provide better support for the bridge and will also ensure the screws in the bridge connect with the bridge patch. I will need to make a new brace for the backboard. I will use more of the monkey pod wood that I have on hand. I cut a piece to the rough size that I need and I will fine tune it to match the other braces. I am laying down painter's tape before I glue the pieces to the new backboard. I dry fit the pieces and planned out the location for clamps and weights before I applied the glue.
I made the new brace longer than I needed. I will trim it down when I dry fit the backboard to the sides of the ukulele. From the drawings, you can see the location for the sound hole patch. This is another change that I'm making to the original layout. The original ukulele didn't have a sound hole patch, but I'm adding one for strength.
The plan was to complete the sound box or body of the ukulele in this video. The process of removing the salvageable parts from the damaged ukulele and assembling the new body has taken longer than I had planned. So I'm breaking up the construction of the body into two parts. By the end of this video, I was able to assemble the backboard and sound bar using both old and new parts. This would have gone faster if I could have done all the glue ups at the same time. Using weights and clamps worked just fine, but the soundboard got crowded. The backboard was simple, but there were multiple sections for the soundboard that required separate glue ups. The bracing first, then the sound hole patch, then the bridge patch, and finally the sound bars connected to the bridge patch. I also laid the glue on heavily and used painter's tape to catch the squeeze out. I will go easier on the glue in the future so that I can skip most of the taping for squeeze out control. In the last few weeks, I have been going through my books on making ukuleles and videos online, and I have a plan for the next ukulele where I can avoid these problems. I will make a go deck and use go bars to hold down the parts as I glue them to the soundboard and backboard. There is a great example of a go deck in a YouTube video by Stereo Chroma called Making a Guitar, Handcrafted Wordworking, that shows how Michael Greenfield and his apprentice make bespoke guitars. There is a lot in that one hour video that I could recommend, but the section that talks about a go deck and go bars is at the 12 minute 30 second mark. It should be straightforward to make a simple small go deck for myself. The video also shows a better way of applying high glue to the parts. I will use that method from now on and that should reduce the amount of squeeze out. I will put a link and information about the stereo chroma video in the description for this video. With a proper go deck and a better way to apply the high glue, I can glue all of the braces, patches, and sound bars on a soundboard at the same time will also allow access to each of the parts so I can remove any squeeze out before it hardens. I'm still working out my video process and editing style. I'm trying to balance showing the complete process without having long stretches of sanding, gluing, or measuring. Let me know in the comments if you think I should show more or less detail on each step of the process and if the segments that demonstrate a step should be longer or shorter. In the next video, we will finish the body of a ukulele. Fingers crossed. Thank you for watching and hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and click on the subscribe button if you want to see my next video in your YouTube watch list. Aloha.